Good morning everyone, this is DQ Tattoos back with another video. This Wednesday we're going to talk about spit shading. I've got a few different methods to show you, so stick around and we'll get into it. Alrighty, so the first thing you're going to need are your brushes. Now, a lot of different brushes here. For spit shading though, you're going to need just two small brushes, alright, because likely you're not going to be doing huge areas. And if you are doing big areas, that's fine, you can. This can apply to, to all kinds of different styles of tattoo, but I'm going to show you how I do it. So, for mine, there we go. I like to use a number two and a number four brush. And I like to use the number two brush for my black and then the number four to shade that out. Another option, still going to need two brushes, but you can use the regular number two or you can use one of these aquash brushes alright these are a water brush they're pretty neat I just ordered this pack off of Amazon they weren't too terribly expensive and what's great about these is you fill up the handle with water that part right there. Let me screw the lid back up. And then you can just use this without the need for a water cup and just do it that way. Or spit. Yeah, you wouldn't need spit either. But we'll get into that part. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate using both. So we got our brushes. You're obviously going to need some watercolor paper. Just got a little scrap sheet left over here. You're going to need some water. And you're going to need some paper towels. Make sure that you're using paper towels for your watercolor painting. Otherwise, you're going to get annoyed really, really fast. Because <laughs> if you use a napkin, it's not nearly as absorbent. You definitely don't want to use toilet paper. And if you use a regular towel, you're going to get little fibers and everything in your paint. So it's not going to look good. So paper towels are definitely the way to go. Uh, that's it, really. Um, I mean, obviously you're going to want to have some design printed on here, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to be doing it uh, like that. Oh, duh. And you need paint. You might need paint. You can tell I've not drank enough of my coffee yet this morning. All right. Let me get out some black paint. Now, with spit shading, if you're actually going to be putting the brush into your mouth, there's one thing you need to check before you get started. I'm using Dr. P.H. Martin's Fine Art Watercolor Paint. And this paint is non-toxic. You know, it says that on here somewhere. Maybe it does not. <laughs> But I have checked, and I'm pretty sure, from what I remember, that these are non-toxic, so we'll check. All right, so I checked, and on Dr. P.H. Martin's website, they actually have MSDS sheets that show that the watercolor, the hydrous watercolors, have been certified non-toxic by a toxicologist. So even though it doesn't say it on here, and I guess that's why they have that AP seal. I did not know what that meant, but yeah, these are definitely not toxic. Which you would have thought I would have made sure of beforehand <laughs> since I have been doing spit shading. Alright, so just get a very little bit of paint. Now there are a few different ways to do this. And I'll kind of demonstrate as many of those as I know. But first you want to take your two brushes. You got your water brush, go ahead and get that wet. In your paintbrush. Now, when I do my black, 
I like to wet the brush a little bit first and it tends to make the ink flow a little bit better so I wet the brush stick it in the black and then I will lay my paint down and you want to make sure this is key if you're wanting to get a smooth transition you want to make sure that your paint is still wet when you apply the water brush so take the water brush you can dip it on a paper towel go to the edge and just very slowly start making back and forth strokes now as I'm sure you're noticing it's not really lightening up that much so if that happens just go back get some more water on it and start pulling again now you can see it's getting a good fade and let's say that's not a good enough of a transition there you want that to go a little bit smoother you can always go back with some more water and just pull it out again it's easiest to work with this when it is still wet so keep that in mind and if you want to push some of the darker pigment back let's say you think the black is too far out you can always go back the other way and remove some pigment so right now there's no spit involved, we're just painting. All right, now we're gonna check out another method. All right, so I clean my brush off. Still we're doing the two brush method, so I'm gonna grab some paint. Some people like to wet the paper first. So our paper is wet. Then, we'll start with our line. You'll notice the ink starts to flow quite a bit on its own. pull away from that. And as you can tell, the more you pull away, the lighter it gets. Why? Because that is the pigment coming out of your brush. At this point, you pretty much just have very little pigment and more, much more water. Alright, and you still say, well, that's, that's still too dark. So you can always go backwards and push, push the pigment back around. Or you can pull it back out again. You know, that's all, that's all most of this is, is just pushing and pulling pigment. So that's another method. I don't use that method very often because it, as you can see, with the ink spreading so much, you have a lot less control over where the color goes. So, your, your control is more in the amount of water you put down first rather than the amount of water you use in the brush afterwards like I did for this top one. All right. Just clean that brush again. Now I'm gonna fill up these pens Actually, I think I already have one filled up. Let me go grab it. Alrighty. Now, this is actually a Secura water brush pen, but it's basically the same. You've got the handle, which you fill with water. The only difference in these is it threads the opposite way. So, to pull it off, you have to turn it to the right. I did not realize this, or forgot, I guess. At some point, I had two of these and I kept trying to turn it to the left to get the tip off and it would never come off so it jammed on there and I eventually ended up cutting it off and just keeping the the other tip so 
glad I figured out that uh, he pulled those the other way. Uh, wish I'd have remembered sooner. All right. So method number three. We've got our water pen, water brush, and your paint. So again, grab a little bit of paint, put it down. Now, take your water brush. You can squeeze it to get some water in the bristles there. Get a little bit of that water off. And then just start slowly blending it out. If you think you got too much black still, then just pat it a little bit dry. Get some of that pigment off of there and the water and go back. There you go. It's all about smooth, consistent strokes back and forth. Back and forth. And you know, this is something that it just takes practice. I mean, you're gonna get it. I don't know why I just stuck that in the water. We'll clean that off. So that is method number three with the water brush. Still using two brushes. All right. You say, Dustin, well, you've not used any spit yet. What's going on? This is a spit shading tutorial. All right, we'll get to that. I'm going to do that now. So method number four, grab some more paint. And our brush, now this brush is dry. Go ahead and lay down your paint. And get some saliva going while you're laying this paint down. Stick your brush in your mouth. Just get it a little wet. And blend it out. Now, as you can see, it's taking a lot less space for that to fade. The reason being is just the amount of moisture in it. Um, unless you just are drooling <laughs> with saliva, you're not likely going to be able to get quite as much moisture from your spit as you would from a water brush or from a just a cup full of water. This is handy if you forgot your water brush and you're not anywhere near a cup of water. <laughs> but overall, just using your saliva is not a preferred method by me anyways. I'm sure they used to do it quite a bit, but depending on the consistency of your saliva, I mean, it can change based on your health, all kinds of things. So. If you don't have to use spit, then then don't don't use spit. Now I have a habit of when I'm blending out. I will usually use my water. Let me get a little bit more paint here too. Oh, I've got some paint on there. That's okay. All right. So. Again, this is how I do it, and this is mostly like method number one. Take your paint, get it wet, take your brush that's been in there, and right now the amount of water that's on there is just way too much. If I were to start doing this without wetting it at all, or drying it at all, you're going to see that that pigment bleeds into the water. A lot, so you're not getting a smooth transition. As soon as I put all that water on, it diluted the ink, what was still wet, and just brought it in. So you don't want that. That doesn't look very good. Now you could just take that water brush, not literal water brush, but the brush you're using with your water. You could Get it on a paper towel, you know, but then how do you know that you really got the amount of water you want?
I mean, we're still getting a smooth transition here, but it dried out way too soon. So you go back in, dry it off again. back out yeah that's fine what I do is I put my paint down I get my other brush wet then I take it and stick it in my mouth real quick and get off any of the excess water and with practice you'll know exactly how to do this how much water you need But I just run it over the top of my tongue, get off any of the excess water. For me, it's just easier than using the paper towel. Now, if I notice that I'm still too dark, I will go over a paper towel to get some of that water pigment off. And then you can pull that back up. But I just run it over my tongue, get off any of the excess water. And there you go. And as long as your watercolor paint is still wet, it's usually pretty forgiving. You can go back into it, pull more pigment out, push more pigment back, and mess with it. So that's not too bad. So there you have several examples. Example one is the way you do it with the two brushes and a cup of water and a paper towel. It looks very smooth, nice, good transition. Example two is where I wetted the area first, then I put the color down, and as you saw, that pigment just spread out really fast. The problem with doing it that way, in my opinion, is that you want when you have a good fade like these you want there to be a concentrated area of black or whatever color you're using you can do this with any color but we're doing it with black you want that concentrated area and then you want it to slowly transition out from that here you lose so much of that concentration because as soon as that pigment hits the water it's going to disperse it's uh, what osmosis I believe something like that where it just fills the area so from my experience that does not work now I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that love doing it that way and it looks great it, it's just a matter of doing what works for you practicing until you get it right so number three was the brush pen brush pen why do I keep saying that was the water brush method with the Sakura water brush and that works great too these are these are awesome um, if you just can't you know, if you don't have access to water you know a big cup of water for your rinse cup or whatever um, these work great uh, but otherwise I wouldn't I don't typically use them I, I usually just go with the two brushes and number four is actually using saliva or spit shading and you know but my, my problem with this one is I just don't get enough moisture to do it um, your saliva is not always the consistency of water it's usually a little bit thicker which is why I don't really care to use it for for my actual shading uh, more often than not if I stick the brush in my mouth it is just to get off any excess water from my rinse cup so that's just kind of a habit that I developed and then here's just showing some more blending with that so uh, give me just a second I'll be right back I will get a an example painting and we'll do that alright found this little piece of paper I'd already painted the background on who knows how long ago so we're gonna go with that here's another tip if you guys don't have some of these circle tools you need to get them they will make your life so much easier. Alright, so what better to demonstrate spit shading with than a traditional rose? Now typically I would draw this on a separate sheet of paper first. 
and then I would get all my lines how I want them use my light box and trace it onto this paper however this is just for an example so I'm just gonna do a little sketch directly on here and then I'll just erase the lines Now, if you're sketching directly on your watercolor paper, paper, <laughs> paper, just remember to go as light as you can with the lines. Right. So, I've got a sketch on there, and I'm going to take my basic Sharpie, get my lines down. I like a Sharpie because they are waterproof, which is very important if you're going to be painting over top of them. They provide a nice, bold, thick line. They're cheap, easy to find. Even if you don't have an art supply store around you, you should be able to find a Sharpie. And the, the nibs, the tips of these, are rather resilient so they hold up to the texture of the paper that you're using. I would not ever use my full-size Copic markers on watercolor paper because it will destroy the nibs unless you use hot press. If you use hot press watercolor paper it's going to be smooth so you're not going to have to worry about that. Go ahead and move that paper towel. Okay, got my sketch. Now I'm going to take my eraser, get rid of those sketch lines, and this is again why you want to draw as light as possible. Because who wants to see sketch lines on their final drawing? Not me. looks good now we can paint so let me get some more paint out you say Dustin why don't you just get a lot out when you start now you won't run out well <laughs> you can always add more paint but once this stuff dries it's a lot different to work with so I prefer to use a little paint at a time if I need more I'll get more that works best for me all right so, <clears throat> if this were taped down, I would probably start from the top left corner and work my way to the bottom right because I'm right-handed and obviously you don't want to start at the bottom right and work your way up and then be smearing your paint all around. So this is, since this is not taped down, I can do it however I want. I like to do my spit shading away from the source. I don't like to move past it and have my black ink in between the brush tip and my hand because I notice that I just don't get as smooth of a blend that way. I like to pull it away rather than push it away. So we'll start up here. Got my two brushes, my paper towel. Gonna get a little bit of paint on there. Also want to make sure that you're not using too much paint on this brush. You can always, always add more. All right. Got my brush wet. And now we're going to pull away. Now, especially if I'm going to be doing color over top of this, I like to pull my black all the way to the edges, or at least to the point where I can no longer determine 
where it ends and where my background color begins. That's going to give you a really smooth transition. Another tip, don't do two areas right next to each other unless you've been doing this for a while because if you happen to cross water over into another area, that's going to cause some blending problems for you and you don't want that. So always best to jump around to areas that are farther away. So if I had just been starting this, instead of going to this uh, pedal right next to that one, I probably would have gone over here so I could get their area done. And then this part would be dry so I could then move over there. go back in and pull more pigment out so it's not transitioning quite how you want just go back into it and if you can't go back into it if the paint's dry then put some more paint down More than anything, the thing that's going to help you the most is just practice. You can watch every video on YouTube on spit shading, but if you're not practicing it, you're never going to get good at it. the color so first we got some carmine and let's see I'm just gonna do that out from the center now I don't like to completely overlap the colors with the black because you won't get as strong of a contrast so I have like to get mine pretty close. But not go over too much. Take a little bit of Payne's Gray for the leaves. And 
Next, I'm going to use some of my favorite color, Gamboge. If you didn't already know that was the color I was going to pick, then where have you been? It's my favorite. All right. I started watercolor painting. I was not very good. Actually, I think I can tell a difference between my very first flash painting video and between now. I think the designs I've made are a lot smoother. And the uh, the color, the shading techniques, and everything like that, I just feel have come a long way. And that's that's the goal. I'm not, I don't care about perfection. Perfection is unattainable. What I care about is better. And as long as you keep practicing, you'll get there. Now this is a really cool color. This is not one of the hydras colors. This is one of the calligraphy iridescent colors. And it's copper. And a little bit of copper around this one. Just for fun. And then I'll do my signature. Hope you guys liked that tutorial on spit shading. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what they are. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Here is the finished painting for today's video. If you'd like to own this, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So all you need to do is you need to be a subscriber. You need to give this video a thumbs up and then leave a comment down below and I will pick a winner next week. So if you want one of my paintings, there's that. You can win it. Albert decided to say hi. He's on my lap. You can't see him though. Uh, as usual, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you know of any friends that could use some of the advice in this video, please share it with them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly videos every Wednesday at noon. And I've also got my Instagram if you want to check that out. It's at DQ Tattoos. Again, thank you for tuning in and watching, and we'll see you next week.